it's almost like bringing a press bag back on par with almost like a CNC machine. Mm -hmm. Yes, to make, correct. To make it a lot quicker to do the arduous task and the quite boring task of changing the tooling over. Tools. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly it. Have you ever seen a press brake with a tool changer? Well, I hadn't until today. We're at the Prima Power Factory in Turin talking to Barry Rooney. Now, first of all, Barry, we'll talk about the uh, tool changer later, but the left-hand side here, the press brake. Now, press brakes are everywhere. What does Prima do differently? Well, our press brake is a slightly different design because this is a servo electric control machine. It's an O-frame, as you can see. Uh, basically giving us a huge amount of stability around the bending uh, area so the force is all evenly distributed across the frame and as I say it's servo controlled so no hydraulics fully electric machine. Okay so top construction on the, the press brake. Yep. Okay now let's move on to the tool changer. I've never seen one of these before. This holds how, how many meters of, of tooling? We've got 32 meters of tooling in there. Which is absolutely incredible. That's a, that's a lot of press brake tooling. Absolutely yes. Yep. Now the tool changer what does that allow the operator to do? So basically because your tools are in there, you haven't got them stored anywhere else, the operator, when he's loading his program in, can call the tooling in from the tool changer automatically. He doesn't have to go searching around for them, finding the right one from a labelled rack or something like that. So here, we've got them all stored nicely in one place. The machine knows where they are. All he needs to do is call them in and the machine will do the rest. It's almost like bringing a press brake back on par with almost like a CNC machine. Mm -hmm. Yes, to make, correct. To make it a lot quicker to do the arduous task and the quite boring task of changing of the changing tooling the tools. over. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly it. It's all stored within the programming, so it's just a matter of the machine doing that bit for you. And also eliminating the operator error of maybe putting the wrong tool of in course. the wrong place. Yes, yes, absolutely. Brilliant. So, but one of the problems I've seen potentially, you've got a big press brake here, which is fantastic, productive piece of machinery. but. The tool changer there, some people might say, well, I could put almost another press brake in the same place. How do you overcome the, the fact that there's a lot of uh, floor space being used by the tool changer? There is still a lot of floor space used, even if you don't have one, because you've got racks of press brake tooling. What we're actually doing here is optimizing that and storing the press brake tooling within a machine that can change the tooling for you. But do I have to buy a tool changer? If I want a tool changer on my press brake tooling, do I have to buy another tool changer with every press brake I buy? We can add more than one machine to the same tool changer. So here we have got the machine and the tool changer. We could equally have another machine on the other side of it. So the same tool changer can service two machines. That obviously makes it more compact. And also if you're doing kind of quite high mix work where you've got low volumes, you could have one tool changer on the right with a skilled operator working that machine, while the other machine is changing the tooling over for another another piece of, of course, work. Yeah. Then your operator could move over to the next one while the next machine that's ready. Yes. So it's almost yeah. like a double pallet changer as well. Of course it is, yeah, yeah. It really depends on what it's making, but the idea is to give it absolute maximum efficiency. Brilliant. And also, so maximum efficiency, making money, productivity is fantastic, but for me, Safety is also a critical factor because your operator is using this machine day in, day out. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of force behind it. Uh, how do you ensure that uh, this uh, safety is, is, is the most critical point? So as you can see over there, the little red box on the right hand side of the machine, that is a laser scanner. So that is watching the V profile you may be able to make out on the camera is actually what the, the uh, camera can see, which is the tooling. If it sees somebody's fingers in there, it isn't going to move. Uh, so all he's looking for is the tooling, and if anything else is there, the machine will not work. That's safety guaranteed then. Okay, that's, that's put, me at, put me at ease. But how do you assure, assure a, a good bend every time? Because I know it's a bit of, it can be a bit of a black art, making sure the bend angle on your parts is right. Mm -hmm. Again, we've got servo electrics for a start. So servo electrics go to a position and they go there repeatedly. So that helps us achieve very, very tight tolerances because there are no other variables in it. It's the, that's just the drive going to its position time after time after time. That gives us really good accuracy and really good repeatability. We can also complement that laser system with an angle measurement system so that it can make corrections actually as it's doing the bend to make sure it comes out exactly as it was programmed. Which is fantastic to know that your first bend will be right and your 99th bend will be right of course, in, a, yes, in a big yeah. batch. What about ease of use now? Because because it's quite hard to find skilled operators in, in bending and, and being able to train them up as quickly as possible to be making good parts is imperative. So how do you make sure that it's easy to use? So you've got a very simple graphical user interface there for programming the part. Um, and as you're actually using the machine, your graphical interface is showing you the position of the part as it goes into the machine. So you'll do your first bend, it will then tell you where to put the material for the next bend and so on until you've completed the part. So it's very, very intuitive. Brilliant. And I've got to say, I did actually use the press brake earlier, 
Um, I've used a few, but this was very intuitive, very easy to use, and very easy to yes. read the graphical interface. Of course, yeah. It's like almost like a full simulation. You're kind of almost looking at yeah. uh, like a, a carbon copy of what you're going to be doing on the, on the press yeah. break. It's a visual guide. It tells you where you should be and what you should be doing, so you can't get it wrong. Okay, and I, I've got to throw this in there. Rising energy costs, as well as material costs, rising energy costs are definitely at the forefront of business managers' minds right now. Mm -hmm. um, and these press breaks, they use a lot of force and a lot of energy to, to make those bends. How are you making sure that, how are you, how are you controlling those costs for the, for the people running these machines? So, again, as I mentioned, it's a servo electric machine. So, servo drives only use energy when they're in motion. Uh, unlike hydraulics, that when they are idling, they are still turning and they're still using energy. This only uses the energy to power the drives as and when they are needed. So we use servo electric drives across all of our machinery range. It's a very important uh, philosophy for Prima Power for energy saving and absolute maximum efficiency. So as I say, this is really only using the power as and when it needs and it applies that force basically through a very, very efficient system there, moving to a position, creating the bend and then returning and that is it. That's the end of the energy usage.